At least once in our lives, we had a fever and we measured how hot we were with a thermometer. Our moms would call the reading of the thermometer your temperature. Well, what is the formal definition of temperature? In physics, we call temperature a scalar that quantifies how hot an object is. That quantifier is usually in terms of a standard reference that means some special temperature. The ticks on the scale of the thermometer are an example of this quantifier. And in fact, we'll discuss some common temperature scales in this unit. The necessity of a scale arises from the fact that even in layman terms, the words hot and cold have a relative meaning. Most of us would have no trouble ranking objects by how hot they are, from hottest to coldest, even without a quantifier. But it would definitely be more difficult to tell how far apart in hotness or coldness these objects are. However, let's first ask ourselves, where does temperature come from? In other words, what makes an object hot? The origin of hotness is in the energy of the particles that make up the object. If you look at a gas in a box, you'll notice that a hotter gas will be made of particles that on average have more kinetic energy than those in a colder gas. Actually, you can tell by comparing snapshots for two different temperatures and observing that the particles of the gas travel more from their original position when the gas is hotter than when the gas is colder. So you could measure for a sufficiently large number of particles the kinetic energy, find the average value, and that would be proportional to the temperature of the gas. In materials that are solid or liquid, there is the additional interactions between particles. So we could define a total mechanical energy at the molecular level. That's called internal energy. Internal energy of a substance is the sum of the molecular kinetic energy to the various forms of motion, translations, rotations, etc. And the molecular potential energy due to the various forces that act both within a molecule and between different molecules. In an ideal gas, these interactions are negligible. So the total mechanical energy reduces to kinetic energy. So the average kinetic energy is proportional to the temperature of the gas. In practice, that experiment is of course impossible because we cannot measure the kinetic energy of millions of particles. So we'll have to resort to a macroscopic definition rather than a microscopic definition. If you put a hotter object next to a colder object, you will observe that energy flows from the hotter object to the colder object. For example, if you're holding a cup of hot coffee in your hand, energy will flow from the coffee to your hand. And if you're holding a bottle of cold beer, energy will flow from your hand to the beer. Based on that, we can define heat as the energy that flows from a hotter object to a colder object due to their difference in temperature. As any kind of energy, it is measured in joules. However, as opposed to the mechanical potential energy or kinetic energy, we cannot say that heat is possessed by an object, but it only can be exchanged between objects that are in thermal contact. The object that has more internal energy will give some of its internal energy to the object that has less. And that is the reason why there is a flow of heat. Heat flows from a hot substance to a cold substance due to the larger internal energy of the hot substance. It is apparent, though, that this exchange of energy cannot go on forever. When two objects with different temperatures are put in contact, thermal equilibrium, which means no more net flow of energy, will be eventually reached. So we know that the two objects have the same temperature just because there is thermal equilibrium between the two. So based on this fact, we can introduce an alternate definition of temperature, that is the so-called zeroth law of thermodynamics. Two objects in thermal equilibrium with each other have the same temperature. Temperature, which means that if you want to know the temperature of an object, you need to put it in thermal contact with another object and wait for it to reach thermal equilibrium with it. However, also the other object needs to be in thermal equilibrium with a third object for you to know its temperature. For that reason, many books give the statement as if A is in thermal equilibrium with B and B is in thermal equilibrium with C, A will be in thermal equilibrium with C. Now that we define the concept of thermal equilibrium, we are ready to define a temperature scale. 
if we want our scale to be linear we need just two special points out of convention these two special points correspond to thermal equilibrium with freezing water that is an ice water mixture and boiling water that is a water steam mixture the temperature at which water freezes and the temperature at which water boils are our reference temperatures and the interval in between can be split in arbitrarily many parts called temperature degrees and if they are all of the same width then we'll have a linear scale of temperature during the course of history several temperature scales have been proposed let's just mention the two that are still existing in most of the world the Celsius scale is used that has the ice water mixture at 0 degrees and the water steam mixture at 100 degrees which means that the interval between freezing water and boiling water is divided into 100 equal parts the Fahrenheit scale used in the US and a few other countries has the ice water mixture at 32 degrees and the water steam mixture at 212 degrees that means that the Fahrenheit scale has the interval between freezing water and boiling water split into 180 equal parts so the Celsius degrees are significantly wider than the Fahrenheit degrees just because in the same interval there is fewer of them the actual conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit is given by this simple formula note that 0 Fahrenheit corresponds to approximately negative 18 Celsius whereas 0 Celsius of course corresponds to 32 Fahrenheit in both Celsius and Fahrenheit scales temperature can be negative a negative temperature in the Celsius scale just means something colder than freezing water a negative temperature in the Fahrenheit scale means something colder than certain salt water solutions that were used by Fahrenheit when he defined the scale and if we used yet another substance instead of water or salt water solution we could define a new scale in which the zero corresponds to the freezing of that substance for example you could invent a scale in which the special points are the freezing and boiling of ethyl alcohol alright here's a question for you 